Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at applications of systems of equations. Make sure you have a calculator handy because you're going to want it for some of these problems. In our first example, we're told that the sum of two numbers is 61. One of the numbers is six more than four times the other. Find the two numbers. Okay, so first thing we know, we're dealing with two unknown numbers. What do we want to call them? Our default is typically x, plus, uh, x and y, so we'll go ahead and use that. What do we know about x and y? We know that the sum of these two numbers, so sum is when we add them, is 61. So we're going to say x plus y is equal to 61. Okay, what else do we know about our mystery numbers? We know that one of the numbers is, is implies equal, so one of the numbers, pick one of them. Let's say x is 6 more than, that's 6 plus, 4 times the other. 4 times the other, I used x, so this one would be y. Find the two numbers. So the other equation that I have is x equals 6 plus 4y. Now we have to decide which method we want to use. We have two equations and two variables. Do we want to use substitution or elimination? You really can't go wrong with this one, but since the second equation already has x by itself, I'm going to use substitution. So since x is equal to 6 plus 4y, anywhere I see an x in that top equation, I'm replacing that x with 6 plus 4y. So it says x plus y, so instead of x, remember I'm substituting in 6 plus 4y, and I just put the parentheses there for emphasis, plus y, because it should be x plus y, equals 61. Now we can combine our like terms. We have 6 plus 5y is equal to 61, and now we want to get y by itself, so we'll subtract 6 from both sides. We get 5y is equal to 55, divide both sides by 5, and we figure out one mystery number is 11. So we know one of them, now we need to figure out the other one. What we could do is we could plug it into either of the given equations or the equations that we wrote, or you can check your work by plugging it into both. If you're not gonna plug it into both, look at the equations and decide which one you think is friendlier to work with. I think the top one is, so I'm gonna say, okay, x plus, and instead of y, I'm substituting in 11, is equal to 61. We'll subtract 11 from both sides, and we get x is equal to 50. So we have x is equal to 50 and y is equal to 11. And again, we can check our work by plugging in 11 into that second equation for y and seeing if we really do get 50. So let's see, does 50 or x really equal six plus four times 11? Well, four times 11 is 44 and six plus 44 does equal 50. So I feel pretty confident that those are the two numbers in this particular problem, 11 and 50. Okay, in our next example, a total of $11,000 is invested into two accounts. One of the accounts pays 9% interest per year, and the other account pays 11% interest per year. If the total interest earned is $1,150, how much money was invested into each account? I find with these, because these can be really scary, set up a table. Use the table. The table will make your life better. I promise, I promise, I promise. Okay, what are we labeling our table? Here we're going to talk about the account that pays 9% interest. So we're going to say 9% account. And here I'm going to have the 11% account. And then this is going to be my total column. Okay, what information do I know about these accounts? Well, I know that money was invested into them. So we're going to call this money invested. And then what's the other thing we know? We know that there's interest earned. So the other thing I'm interested in, ha ha ha, no pun intended, is the interest earned. Get it? Interest, interest. I know. Hilarious. Okay. So how much money was invested into each account? Well, I don't, I don't know. It's kind of what the question's asking, isn't it? So when we don't know, we use variables. With these questions, I like to use variables that relate back to the percent interest they are when possible, um, just because then I don't really have to define it otherwise. So I'm going to use an N for the account that pays 9% interest and an E to represent the account that pays 11% interest. So the amount invested in the first account plus the amount invested in the second account totals how much money? $11,000. Okay, now let's talk about the interest earned. So however much money is in this account, I get 9% interest on it. We represent that by saying 0 0.09 times N, right? Because we can't use the percent we convert it to a decimal by dividing by 100 or moving the decimal two places to the left. 
How much interest do I earn in the other account? Well, that would be 11% of whatever I have invested into that account, or we would say 0.11 times E, because again, you have to divide by 100 to, move, to convert that percent to a decimal. How much interest was earned total? It says right here, 1,150. Now, why do I like the table so much? Because the work is done for me now. Look, uh, investment plus investment equals the total. Percent interest earned plus interest earned equals the total. So it sets up the two equations that I need for this problem. The first one is the nice one. We have N plus E is equal to 11,000. The second one is a little bit trickier. We have 0 0.09 of N plus 0 0.11 of E is equal to 1,150. Now what we might want to do is if you want to get this out of decimals, you can. Um, they both go to the hundredths place, so I would multiply all three terms by 100. Move those decimals over, we get 9n plus 11e is equal to 1150, and then we multiply by 100, so we add two more zeros, 115,000. Now you can decide which you want to use if you want to use substitution or elimination. We're finally ready for that. I like using uh, elimination for these types of problems, but really you can't go wrong with either. Um, I would always choose the smaller value, so I'm going to eliminate the n's. I need this n to be, have the exact opposite coefficient as the, one, the other one, the 9. What's the opposite of 9? Negative 9. So I'm going to multiply each term in the top equation by negative 9. I'm just going to rewrite that first one. So we have 9n plus 11e is equal to 115,000. Then when I multiply that other equation by negative 9, I get negative 9n minus 9e is equal to negative 99,000. Now that should eliminate the n's, which it does. Those cancel. 11e minus 9e is 2e. 115,000 minus 99,000 is 16,000. Now I can get e by itself by dividing both sides by 2. And we figure out that there is $8,000 invested in the account that pays 11%. So there's 8,000 there. How much is invested in the account that pays 9%? Go back to one of the two original equations. So you can either use this one or this one and plug in 8,000 per E. I'm definitely using the top one because that one looks way friendlier than the bottom one. When I plug in, I get N plus 8,000 is equal to 11,000. Well, that's saying what plus eight is equal to 11? That would be three, or in this case, 3,000. So we know that n is 3,000. So now we know that there is $3,000 invested in the account that pays 9% and $8,000 invested in the account that pays 11%. Not so bad, right? Okay, in our last example, we have Jose bought a pay-as-you-go phone. He sent a total of 25 picture and text messages, which cost him $6.38. If the text message rate is 14 cents per message and the picture message rate is 32 cents per picture, how many of each type of message did he send? Again, we're trying to build two equations with two variables, and it looks like we do have some totals here. So we have the total number of messages he sent, and that would be 25. So we're going to say P plus T is equal to 25, where P represents our picture messages and T represents our text messages. What's the other total thing I know? Oh, I know he, he spent a total of $6.38. What's the breakdown of that? Well, the text message rate was 14 cents per message, so I'm going to put that under the T, 14 cents per text, and the picture message rate was 32 cents per picture, so 0.32 times the number of pictures, and this adds up to $6.38. So you see we've built our two totals, and I could have used a table here again, but it is possible it turns out to do these without a table, so it's up to you. If you like organizing the information with the, the table, you can. So we have our total messages, and then we have the total bill, or the, the amount that it cost. Um, I'm probably going to get rid of these decimals. Since they all go to the hundredths place, I'll multiply all three terms by 100. Just to clear those out, we get 32p plus 14t is equal to 638. And now, I like using elimination for this, so I'm going to take this top equation and I'm going to multiply all three terms by negative 14. When I multiply by negative 14, I get negative 14p minus 14t is equal to 
12 would be 3, plus uh, 2 more would be negative 350. Then let's see, those eliminate 32 minus p, 32p minus 14p is 18p. 638 minus 350 is going to be 288. And then to get p by itself, we'll divide both sides by 18. And we figure out that he sent a total of 16 picture messages. So now we know he sent 16 picture messages. We're going to take that knowledge and plug it back into one of the original equations. You can choose either one. The top one to me looks a lot friendlier. And we have 16 plus t is equal to 25. I subtract 16 from both sides. And we figure out that he sent nine text messages. So we have nine text and 16 picture messages. And if you want to, you can check your work by plugging into that second equation and make sure that by plugging in 9 for t and 16 for p, that the total adds up to $6.38. These have been applications of systems of equations. Thank you for stopping by.